welcome back to the channel guys uh, it's Stu from Battleforge Brothers and here I've decided to do um, a bit of an army development video it's the first time uh, that I've decided to do one of these um, and I've decided to do it on uh, the uh, these guys the Thousand Sons so normally um, doing something like this I would normally have the the, the codex in front of us but uh, mine is a digital codex so I haven't got the physical copy I uh, might end up looking to get it in the future but Basically, um, I've decided to look at the Thousand Suns, um, not because I feel as though that they're underperforming or anything like that. I just think there's a couple of changes that I'd like to do to them. A uh, little bit more of a showcase on some of the different mini miniatures uh, and also to, to, to bulk the force out a little bit more, especially for objective-based games. Um, if you have watched the battle report against the, the Imperial Knights, I think they held their own. Um, however, it could have been a little bit better uh, by more objective based, um, more on my part for going for the objectives. But I think what I'm looking to do is just to, to bulk the force out a little bit more and have a lot more bodies on there. Um, so I, I have already kind of had a look at doing a few different uh, lists, I've uh, been toying with an idea of dropping things out, put, putting things in. And I've come up with a list that I think will suit a lot of the fluff uh, design for what the Thousand Suns for, for the psychic abilities. Um, and also getting a few new toys, of course. We always like to have new toys. So what I'm going to do is um, have a, a, a quick uh, a quick look at, at what units can do what. Most most of the of the force that I've got is, is staying, um, so I'm pleased about that. Uh, but there's just a couple of changes that we need to do. So I'm going to do a bit of a breakdown um of you know what the detachments are going to be what the overall philosophy of uh, of the army is going to be um and obviously things like stratagems how they're going to work and obviously relics and things like that so uh we'll quickly uh quickly pull away while I, uh, and then we'll come back uh, while we do uh do the list right so i've got me uh me, me little diary here um i suppose if you want to call it that um and this is uh Mainly just going to have a quick look at, at um, there's a couple of list ideas that I've come along with um, that I've already kind of been playing around with. Uh, but basically it, it's going to be, it's 2,000 points which is what I'm aiming for. Um, it, same as what I've always had for all my forces. Most games uh, that are on the channel are generally around about 2,000, maybe sometimes a little bit under um, when it's things like the Harlequins on the channel, stuff like that. So it's 2,000 points um, that I'm looking at. Uh, it's obviously going to be Battle Forge, so three command points for that, and I'm going to run two detachments. I'm going to run the first one, which is the Battalion, and then, of course, I'm going to run the Supreme Command Detachment as well. Um, so a nice, uh, nice healthy amount of command points, so that'll give us five five for Battalion, uh, three, so that's six, seven, eight, um, and then we'll have uh, the uh, Supreme Command Detachment as well. Um, so that will give us... Obviously five, five for that, six, seven, eight, nine. So a nice healthy amount of command points. I think a lot of the stratagems, uh, even just rerolls, um, is quite helpful, especially for Thousand Sons. Uh, but a lot of the stratagems are quite, quite, quite good for Thousand Sons, um, which uh, I'll not cover all of them. Uh, this isn't a codex review. Um, I, I don't really do codex reviews at the moment because there's they're already out. But uh, there's a few. Uh, Stratagems which I'll be discussing which is what I like and what I plan on Not really relying on but what I plan on using with these command points So the battalion detachment I used to run um, I used to have Magnus quite a lot. I know he's not uh, HQ, but I used to have Magnus quite a lot now Reluctantly um, I well, I'm saying reluctantly. I'm good. I'm for this list. I'm gonna drop him um, I I mean, he, he, is, he is good, but um, and the damage that he can dish out is really cool as well, especially with a super duper smite. But I want to get more bodies in there, and, and this, like I say, this is just a bit of a change up. Might end up including them later on down the line in uh, different lists and obviously bigger games. Uh, but first, obviously, we've got uh, the HQ. So the, the first HQ is this boy here. So it's going to be Araman. Um, so Araman. He is on a disc. I'm going to keep him exactly like that at the moment as well. Um, and points wise for him, he is coming in at 166 points. So 
pretty decent HQ. Um, I, d I don't think he's ever died on any game that I've had with him. Um, he's got quite reliable uh, maneuverability and cast three powers. Um, and he automatically gets the plus one. It's not as good as Magnus's, um, but he is a very, very good psyker. Um, and obviously, he's a, sp he's a Chaos Space Marine, so he's got the three up save. He's got the in run. Um, he's very decent, so I do like him. So he's in the force. Um, love the model as well. I'm quite pleased with how it came out. Uh, the next uh, for the battalion, obviously, you need to take uh, two. And this is going to be one of the new units, so I'm going to I'm gonna look at alternative models because uh, I'm going to have a Demon Prince. So I'm not too keen on the GW of Demon Prince, uh, to be honest. Um, sometimes they look good and sometimes like, I look at them and I think that they look poor. So I'm looking at alternatives for that. Um, so far... I'm thinking of the, uh, well, it's an Age of Sigma model. Uh, I'll leave it as that because I might do it as an update video as a bit of a showcase when I when I uh, get my hands on it. So we'll leave it at that. So Demon Prince, I considered giving him wings, um, but the role that I want him to play is actually going to be more of a defensive-based role uh, to provide his buffs uh, because he does give a nice, uh, like, a re-roll uh, ones to hits. So I think I'm going to leave him without the wings. Um, maybe he's, I might give him the wings in the future, but we'll, I'm going to leave him without that. Um, so the weapons that he can have, you can give him a Hellforge sword, uh, which is pretty decent. But I'm going to stick him with uh, two Malefic Talons. And the reason for this is mainly just because of the, of the benefits that it gives. I, I feel as though it, it is a really cool, uh, cool weapon. So... The Demon Prince, I am just going off my uh, digital codex here as well. Um, unfortunately, because I haven't got the physical one. Um, first of all, obviously, he gets uh, the same as Iron Man. He gets Death to the False Emperor, so that's a pretty decent rule. I keep forgetting about this. It's, it is a, it, it's an easy, simple little rule, and the benefits of it are great, but I keep forgetting it. I must keep remembering it. Uh, basically, if um, a hit roll of a six, um, you, can, you can do like an, uh, you get an additional attack. So I think that's pretty decent. Um, so he, the Demon Prince of Zinch has a 4 plus in run as well. So that's going to keep him nice and safe. Um, with him having the uh, the character keyword, it's going to be difficult to target him because he's uh, he's not a 10 wound model. Uh, he, has, he has 8 wounds, so it's nice, uh, a nice uh, healthy amount of wounds there. Um, I believe he also has a 3 up, yeah, he has a 3 up, in run, uh, three up standard armor save. So he's pretty, pretty tough. Um, I mean, with him having a, a, a toughness six, eight wounds, he's got a three up save, four up in run. Um, and with him having the character word as well, I think he's uh, looking forward to getting him. So I'm going to give him without the wings and he's going to have, I'm just going to put MT for talons. Uh, now the talons, just getting off a little bit subject here, the talons are pretty decent. So it's strength of the user. So this guy's strength seven. So... He's going to be wounding most things on threes. Things like Eldar Tau. Uh, normally it's, he's going to be winning on twos, which is great. Um, so he's hit, nice strength there. Um, and it is a minus two to the AP and it's damage two as well. So yes, it's not as, as powerful as things, you know, like, um, like Imperial Knight style weapons or anything like that. But that's not what I'm looking for this guy to do. If, if he's relied upon for combat... Uh, which he more than likely will, you know, a deep strike has come down or anything like that, he's going to be there to be able to help. And that's what I'm aiming for. And that is, uh, so it also gives an additional three attacks, which is one of the main reasons I've took this guy uh, with the Talons, because standardly he gets four attacks. And he's hitting on twos, which is brilliant. And he's also rewarding ones. So with the Malefic Talons, he gets an additional three. So seven attacks, hitting on twos, rewarding ones, which is great. Two damage apiece, minus two. It's going to pretty much, you know, wreck the most things that he gets in combat with. So very, very happy to include him in the force there. And um, for the points wise for the Demon Prince, uh, it's pretty decent actually because he comes in, he's actually 10 points cheaper than Ironman. So he comes at 156 points for that. 
So pretty pretty happy with that. And that's uh, the HQ filled out for them. And so quite happy. Ironman, Damon Prince. Like I say, I might change them and give them wings later on down the line, but we'll see. So just moving on to troops. Um, I have a... I, I did want to have rubrics in the squad in the army. I used to have, well, I still do own, of course, um, uh, twenty. I am going to reduce this down. I'm going to have one full squad of ten man rubric squad. Um, so I've got a ten man squad there. Obviously, within that is going to be six inferno bolt guns, uh, which the bolt guns are pretty decent as well. Um, you know that the 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 AP miners on that, uh, given the the buffs that they do for the all is dust. Um, I mean the standard the standard weapon like I say the infernal bolt gun, it's um it, it's strength four minus two, and one damage, so it's pretty decent. I'm gonna have two warp flamers in there. This is mainly for Overwatch protection and also if they do decide to move out, um maybe it's to go and claim an objective and there's uh, you know somebody close by or on the objective, uh, the warp flamers they are only an eight inch so that's why I've mainly relied on them for the protection for Overwatch. Uh, but it's D6, D6 uh, attack, uh, hits, and they hit automatically as well. So it's potentially 12 Warp Flame hits coming in. Um, pretty, pretty good. They are only one damage, of course, but uh, with the AP minus two, even a Terminator charging in, it's going to be a Forp save. So 50-50, they're going to fail it. And with, and with all of them coming in, you might end up killing one or two Terminators, which is always good. Um... And against against normal units like normal uh, you know primaris marines tactical marines uh, even things like tyranids you're going to absolutely tear them apart while they come in because rubrics aren't the best in combat and then of course i have to have the soul reaper cannon in uh, soul reaper cannon strength uh, strength five ap minus three and one damage a uh, pretty decent range as well 24 inch range for that um it's 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 done quite a bit of damage for me in the past uh, it's a fairly good weapon and of course, within that, you get uh, the Aspiring Sorcerer. So the Aspiring Sorcerer, I have got the points to be able to give him uh, the Warp Flame Pistol. Just going to write the initials down for that. So it's a little bit of a shorter range, and it's a little bit weaker as well, um, but it's still uh, D6. For, so especially against Overwatch, I've not only got the two Warp Flames, I've now got the Warp Flame Pistol as well. So against these... Um, charging in, I'm at least going to have some form of hits, unless of course they're over 8 inches away. Um, it's a little bit of a deter uh, deterrent of course. So these, the rubrics are probably one of the most expensive um, on the list. Uh, these come in at 252 points. So it's quite a lot of points that's sunk into that squad, but I want these mainly to be like a screen and I'm I'll explain who to the, the they're gonna be more forwards the sighters. So there's a sighter already in there, but I want these to move on to objectives if I need them to, or to stay on my backfield objectives and give a nice protection, especially with the three up save, uh, the invulnerable save that they get as well, and also the all is dust rule. So the all is dust, if anything's got a damage of one, um the 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 AP uh, the, sorry the save is improved so if it's only if it's AP dash and one damage these guys go to a two up save or even them them weapons where there are minus one even you know it's knocking it up to a four up, brings it back down to a three up with the all is dust roll as long as the damage is one of course so it's quite handy so that's uh, that's quite done um, and the next change is um, some new units now this will probably take a while because I do plan on getting three lots of these, and you're probably going to know what they are. So it's the only other real troop choice that I can get, apart from going into demon side of it for horrors. And I'm going to have uh, three lots of ten-man squads of Zangors. Now, I do like the look of the models for these. Um, they're pretty good as well, actually. Um, they are designed purely for cannon fodder. Um... You know, they're not the strongest. That's why I've got the rubrics in there. They're more of the resilient troops to, to, to hold back and protect. These guys, the Zangors, is what is going to be rushing out, getting me objectives, running interference, 
and hopefully getting some nice charges off because they're actually not too bad in combat either. So there's two configurations you can have for these. So you can have them with uh, a bow pistol and chainsaw, which is fairly okay. Or you can leave them standard with the uh, the Zango blades. Now, if you leave them with the Zango blades, uh, they do get a minus one for their attacking. So it's minus one, damage one, which I think that's better. Um, I do, I've, I've, got, I've got these, you know, I've got other things in there to be able to do the shooty power. And for Thousand Suns, shooting isn't really where I'm relying on. I'm relying on my psychic abilities and mortal wounds to dish out more of the damage. Um, so I wasn't too bothered about the uh, the chain swords and bow pistols for these. So three ten man squads of Zangos. Um, in them is a twist bray each. I've given them no further upgrades. You can give them a bray horn. Um, the ten points to do so, and it, 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 you add one to your charge in advance. I don't think it's really worth it for 10 points a time. It'd be 30 points to do this for each squad just to give them the one. Now, I'm probably going to eat my words because it'll come up in a game in the future and it'll be the one inch that'll cause us. But, you know, I'm I'm quite happy to, to leave it at that. Now, these, obviously, uh, they're the, a the fairly cheap unit as well. So they are 70 points for a squad of 10. So... That will give me um, 140, uh, 210 for three lots of Zangos. So I'm quite happy at that. So that gives me nice bulk. Start, uh, the army's starting to bulk out now. So, you know, I suppose if I could, if I wanted to at one point, I could drop this down to 210 man and make, an, um, and make another one. Or actually, no, sorry, I could make... Uh, one one big squad of uh, of twenty and another one of ten, and that would still fulfil the requirements for a battalion. I could do that, uh, but I like the flexibility of having multiple units dotting around. Uh, like I say, they're not going to survive very long. They're not designed to soak up. They are just cannon fodder. They're designed to just go out, take the hits, and get me get me uh, them precious uh, points for securing objectives. So that's uh, the troop side all done. So moving on to the elites, um, pretty standard with these. A um, couple of little changes. So I've got this, uh, the Scarab Occult. So these are unchanged. So they are a five-man squad of the Terminators. Now, a couple of games these guys have underperformed for me, and I think that's pretty much due to the way that I've played them, to be honest. So... Uh, need need to kind of just adjust and, and maybe think a little bit before I drop them in, uh, but I do I do still rate these, so they're in. So in this squad is a, a Soul Reaper cannon, Hatu, such an iconic weapon for these, and I've also took the uh, the Hellfire missile rack because uh, it's a pretty pretty nice decent weapon as well. And for the sorcerer. I, a lot of combinations that I've seen, especially when they first come out, it was a bit daft because he had the um, the stave in his hand and the power sword. And I thought, well, the stave's pretty decent weapon anyway, and he's going to lose out on his shooting ability for his, com uh, his combi bolter. Um, so combi bolter's been put on him. So there's four combi bolters in there and the soul reaper and the hellfire sword. And a lot of nasty firepower, um, especially within half range. And there's some nice little stratagems to use for these as well. Um, one of them being uh, the, oh, I can't remember what it's called, it's, I'm sure it's called Death to the Fall Center or something like that, uh, but it's basically they get plus one on the wound rolls. These guys, if the deep strike in a prime position and you play that stratagem can can do a lot of damage, so, and of course with there being a psyker in there as well, so that's quite a nice little, uh, a little force. I think what I might start doing is these is I might start playing them a little bit more defensively as well, just to see how that plays out. So that's that's them all done, and uh, the points for them comes at uh, two hundred and thirty-eight. So they're the second most expensive, uh, other than the rubrics. But they are they are good with the two-up save, of course, and they've got the all is dust rule. And obviously they have the invulnerable save as well, so to protect them. Now the next elite. Now this is, it is open for change here, but um, I think I might get one and and just try it out, uh, just just to see what's what. So I'm considering, and for this particular list, I'm going to get 
Um, Zango or Shaman, or Shaman, however you want to say it. And I quite like the look of the model. And I know most of the time that's the purpose of buying a model. You you know you you get it for the for the looks of it, which is normally what I've always done. Now this guy, um, I'm getting him here him mainly for the buffs to the Zangos. Now he's on a disc, so he's got pretty decent movement. Um, for the Zango Shaman, uh, he's quite cheap as well. Uh, so I will just bring up his stats for him. So, um, he is a character as well, so he can't be targeted. So. I'm thinking about sticking him close by with the other Zangos. They soak up. He doesn't take any damage. Uh, he's not the closest target. And there's a couple of buffs that he can give out to these as well. So if these start to get into combat, this guy can help out. So he moves 12. He's on the disc. It's obviously it's all incorporated into his points. Uh, he's a sighter as well, which is quite important because for Thousand Sons, I wanted a lot of sighters in. This guy is another sighter. So he, can, he only casts one power. Um, but that could be Smite. So with the buffs to Thousand Suns, I think probably Smite's going to be the main thing that I'm going to be doing. So he he's movement 12. Uh, he's got Ballistic and Weapon Skill of 3+, plus, uh, Strength and Toughness of 4. He's got 4 wounds, so he's pretty alright. Uh, he does have 3 attacks, so he can, he can hold his own a little bit in combat. He's obviously not combat design, but uh, against weaker units, he might he'd, he'd be fine, he should be fine. Um... With uh, the weapon, he uh, the abilities mainly is what I've got him for. So he's got um, Aura of Dark Glory. So that gives him this 5-up invun. So against nasty weapons, things like Melter, stuff like that. At least he's still got that to rely on. And he's got the main one is the uh, the Bestial Prophet roll. Now what this does is add 1 to any hit rolls you make for friendly Zango units within 6 inches. So if I... Get it right and move these, say, at least two units of Zangos up. And I want to get them into combat and say they get into combat with a Tau gun line, something like that. Um, I know it's a little bit suicide with Tau having the um, the Overwatch rule, but let's just say they, they get in. This guy's close by, giving them the buffs. All of a sudden, especially if I can trigger it so that all three are within six inches of this guy, all of a sudden that's 30 Zangos hitting on twos with Zango Blades, um, yeah, Strength 4, but obviously Tower only Toughness 3, or even Eldar, Toughness 3. Uh, it's going to be wounded on 3s, and the minus 1 as well, so uh, Tau just off the top of my head, 4-up save becomes a 5-up save. That's pretty decent, and I know Guardians have like a 5-up save, so it's bringing them down to a 6-up. You're going to absolutely tear through like weakish units. I don't think these guys would really be designed to go on against Marines. Maybe it's Picking on a unit, maybe it's two units going after a tactical squad or something like that. I think that might work. Um, but it's if they if they do get, and of course, just the buffs that he gives, I think it'd be pretty pretty cool. And chucking out Smite is always nice. Um, he does have another rule as well, which is the Sorcerer's Elixir. So you can re-roll uh, the first failed site you test that you make for him. Uh, it can only be used once per uh, once per battle, however. Um, so it's an easy one to forget, but... If you're wanting to get Smite off and he fails that all-important Smite, um, or even another power as well, because he can take from Discipline a change, um, you want to get a nice power off, he fails it, you got that free rear roll, if you need to, of course. And it means that you're saving on your, uh, your command points. So I'm quite happy with him, and he uh, he only comes in, um, I believe it is uh, 90, yeah, 90 points for him. So give him a try, see what he's like. Um... And then, like I say, if any changes or anything like that, like I say, please, uh, you know, don't don't be uh, afraid to leave the comments. Um, you know, I'm I'm quite happy with the way that it is so far, and we'll certainly check uh, check it out. But um, he's a maybe. I, I think I will try him. Um, but there is room for movement on this guy to maybe drop him out, and if you can think of something else to put in for ninety points, you know, by all means, leave a comment. So that's the elite section done. Um, I've got no uh, no fast attack. Um, there is a couple of fast attacks you can take, things like Chaos Spawn, but I, I thought about putting them in, but going to move straight on to the heavy support side of it. So the heavy support. Now, I hummed and hard for quite some time about, about the heavy support. 
because I didn't want to go down the rule the the route of having, you know, lots of um, marine based stuff. I didn't want to have your vindicators, loads of predators, you know, like three of each and things like that. Um, now, I decided after quite some time I am going to keep the uh, the the, predator, the chaos predator is going to stay in. He's underperformed. I've had a couple of mismatched games with them, but I thought I, I, I kind of need a little bit of anti-tank in there. Um, I toyed with maybe taking it out and putting a Hellbrute in. Um, but I'm going to try, I'm going to keep it the way that it is for now. Um, see see what happens. So I do have a Chaos Predator. He is staying in for now. Um, and I've gave it the Laz cannons. So he's got the twin one on the top. So twin Laz. And the sponsor Laz. And I do need to get the um, the strut because I uh, because I am going to give it the havoc launcher as well, um, the havoc launcher on that. It's a pretty decent weapon, and obviously if I just need to get the little strut because I've got the havoc launcher. It's like the little uh, just um, the little fix that puts it on. I, I don't know where I put it, but I need to get that. Um, and then once it's all painted up, I'll stick it on the predator, uh, magnetize it on, of course, um, and then drop it on. So it just gives it a little bit more punch. So, I mean, with four Laz cannons, can't really go wrong. But I just think, it, for the time being, I think it's... it's. I was just a little bit concerned that I didn't have enough anti-tank. So, that's staying in. Now, it is quite expensive. So, it is uh, it works out with uh, 201 points. And that's for one tank. But it is a, it is quite a powerful tank uh, to be able to dish out, you know, the, the D6 damage. Especially with psychic support, you know, potentially hitting on twos. Uh, threes if it moves so predator staying in uh, the next ones are going to be some new units um I, th I pondered about these as well actually uh, because i wanted something a little bit more chaos orientated and i wanted something a little bit more um designed for combat because i don't have a great deal of combat orientated stuff i mean i've got the zangors but they're not really designed for going toe-to-toe -to -toe against uh you know like special characters or taking vehicles out or anything like that in combat so i decided um looking through the codex and also looking at models as well the models that i like and it's decided again uh, for the mauler fiend i've liked them for quite a long time um never getting around to getting them yet but it'll be a while before this uh, list changes but uh, these are the list uh, the list changes that i'm proposing on the channel so i'm going to go for a mauler fiend so I think these guys, I think they suit quite well for the Thousand Sons. I think, um, you know, it can be imagined that, you know, that a Thousand Sons are controlling this machine and making it just go nuts, um, as, you know, all the Chaos kind of engines do. Um, so Mauler Fiend is pretty cheap, actually, for what he can do. Um, he's, qu he's nice and quick as well, so, which I was quite pleased with because it can move up quite fast. With psychic support, can can obviously hover alongside him or just be behind him. It's things like warp time, move again, you know, nice little tricks like that. He's quite resilient, and he's also. It sounds a bit daft saying this, but I know a lot of uh, a lot of armies do it. But he's also going to be a bit of a target, which in a, in a way is a little bit helpful because it keeps the rest of the firepower away from the bulk of the force and away from the more. The, the, the you know like the characters all the you know the things that are doing the mortal wounds so i think it's going to be quite nice so mauler fiend uh he comes he has a movement characteristic on his full kit full wounds because he, he is a multi-wounded model uh, he comes in at 12 wounds so yes he can be targeted straight off the bat off the bat uh, but 12 wounds pretty decent uh he is a toughness seven so that is uh, that's a nice good toughness there reliable against most uh, small most small arms fire um and of course he's uh with him being a uh a, a chaos engine he moves quite quick so he let's say he moves 10 on his full capacity he's strength six now this is the only thing that kind of put me a little bit off now the mauler fiend is one of the first units that i've come across where the strength diminishes the wounds so i was a little bit worried but the way that i've worked it out i'm not going to be too worried about this to be honest um now, as for the... Uh, he does have an Invern as well, with him being a, a demon. So he's got a 5-up Invern. 
and he, they always, at the beginning of the turn, they always recuperate a wound back, which I think is pretty decent. Um, so let's just say somebody works really hard, they drop one wound. Um, you know, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an annoying factor. You know, you put a lot of work in, even if it's small arms fire, you take that wound off and you think, right, okay, fair enough, I've took a wound off. <laughs> the next turn he gets it back. I just think, ah, oh. you know, it's just a little bit disheartening and, and it's psychological against your opponent. Uh, there's there's obviously things like Laz Cannon and stuff like that that can just probably one, you know, almost like two shot kill it, things like that, uh, which will always work. But it takes that heavy firepower away from things. Maybe it's even the Predator, you know, the target and these instead of that keeps that safe, keeps my anti tank there. So I've got uh, the Morlefiend and I'm going to give him, he comes automatically with the fists. So the, the Morlefiend fists are already part of the model, so you don't pay any points for that. Um, Morlefi and Fist are, are really good actually, so they are uh, for, they are designed for combat as well. So it's times two strength, so it is full wounds, it'd be strength 12, um, which is very good. Wounding the majority of things on threes at least, some even twos. Um, even against Imperial Knights, um, you know, things like this would be pretty, pretty decent. The only back draw of these with the combat weaponry is that they are only hitting on four up. Uh, but of course, there is ways to improve that, and there's stratagems and psychic powers and stuff like that as well. Um, so he gets uh, on his full full capacity. He gets four attacks. So that's four attacks with them. Pretty decent. It's times two strength, so it'll be strength twelve. It's AP minus three and th flat three damage. So uh, amazing. A, 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 a potential of doing twelve damage off the bat. That's if all of your hits and all of your wounds come through. It's not very likely that it's going to happen that way, but it does happen, and I've seen it happen. Uh, similar models where you, you know, the the the, 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 like the golden opportunity happens. You get all your hits, you get all your wounds, and your opponent fails all of his invulnerable saves, and all of that damage goes through, and just you just absolutely wreck a tank. So with the fists, that's fine, but I've also decided to take the lasher tendrils. I think they look cool. On the, on the model and for the benefits it gives uh, I think it just outweighed it uh, the magma cutters are pretty decent as well but uh, it also makes the uh, model fit it is cheaper now the lasher tendrils uh, strength of the user yet again um, so it's it's going to be a strength 6 so wounded Eldar uh, wounded Tau uh, Harlequins Jakar, some Jakari stuff apart from things like Homunculus stuff but uh, wounded all that kind of stuff on 2's uh, wounding the majority of other things on threes, which is uh, threes and fours. So the lasher tendrils are minus two AP and two damage. So they're still pretty, pretty good. You know, um, minus two, two damage. You know, you're going to be killing Primaris Marines, you know, straight out, which is nice. But the good thing about these uh, lasher tendrils is in the rules, and as far as I'm aware, hasn't been FAQ'd anywhere or anything like that, uh, but it does say. Uh, that each time that the bearer fights, it can make its six additional attacks with this weapon. So that's each time it fights, and it's six additional. So he already gets four attacks on his top bracket. So an, an additional six on top of that. So he's, you know, he, he, uh, he's, he's getting, what, like, ten attacks? Four with his fists and six with these. Which I just think is mental. He's, he's designed for combat, and it certainly shows with that amount of attacks. Like I say, it's not as strong as the fists, but it's going to make mincemeat and it's going to do that damage. You know, you're going to wreck tanks and dreadnoughts, uh, provided obviously that you, you know that you get in there and um, you you can take a little bit of damage. But once you start taking too much, you know you're only getting you know the next bracket down. You're getting three attacks, not so bad. But then all the way down, you're only getting two. But the lasher tendrils could still help out with that because you're still getting your additional six, so because they don't degrade. So at at the bare minimum you're still getting eight attacks which which is pretty good um so this guy um with all of his uh weaponry that i've decided to give him um he's quite cheap actually he only comes in at 152 points so so far um apart from obviously in each individual zango unit uh, he's one of the cheapest so uh, apart from the zango shaman as well so it's pretty dirt pretty decent and i had enough points to stick a second one in as well so, I thought it would be really cool to have two of these, you know, stomping up the field, supporting the Zangors as they move out to objectives. These guys draw that fire, that lot of the firepower that could potentially kill these. 
And I mean, I, I'm expecting Zangwars to die, but it means that these guys, you know, someone might go, oh, there's, there's, there's two Morphines charging towards us. Do I shoot at the Zangwars? You know, a, a clever player would, especially if it was objective based, but, you know, a, a lot of people will go, oh, the Morphines are jumping up. Let's take them out. And, and they will, you know, they will end up shooting at them and they will end up dying sometimes. They will end up exploding. But I just think, looking at the force, the way that it was, the main real threat was kind of Magnus. Oh, Magnus is flying up. And, you know, with, with good reason, he's powerful. But the way that the force is looking at now, I've got two big monstrous creatures and they're going to, uh, you know, want to get them painted up and bought. I think they look great and have two of them on the field moving up. I just think thematically it'll look class basically um predator in the back supporting firing you know it takes a lot of the firepower you know if they're putting if the enemy especially things like uh, graham's the main opponent on the line of uh, on the channel and you know if he's pumping things like las cannons and stuff like that into them you know it draws it away from the predator or vice versa somebody might think mm, well actually i'm gonna go for the predator then these remain untouched so it's kind of that mm, do i go for that or do i go for that you know, and it, it keeps a lot of the other stuff nice and safe. You know, with the sighters being there, quite nice. Now, that's pretty much almost done. The last part is purely just the other de uh, the other detachment, um, which is the Supreme Command. And you'll guess straight away what this is. Any thousand some players out there will. And I'm running out of room on here, but <laughs> it's going to be three Exalted Sorcerers now. I've used them before. They've been in the list quite a lot of times. These guys, most of the time, even they've died quite a lot of times. But before they do, they normally they normally help a lot. Uh, so I've got an exalted sorcerer on a disc, and I've also got two on foot. Two exalted on foot. So points wise for these. Now the guy on the disc is one hundred and forty one points. Uh, these have all got Inferno Bolt Pistols. And the reason for that is because I plan on using most of these for more defensive based. And I've got other stuff to be able to back them up. I didn't really have the points to give Warp Flame Pistols to all of them. Um, but I'm not too bothered about that, to be honest. I'm not really relying on them for for that ability. And the other two on foot, uh, they come in at uh, 200 and, well, 121 points. Yeah, uh, 242 points for them two. So... And that's it. So that gives me one command point for that. So that gives me, like I say, I've got the five, six, seven, eight, nine command points in total. Which is much better than what I'm currently running. Because at the moment I'm normally running a patrol detachment. A Supreme Command and Battleforged. Uh, which literally gives me four command points. And that's it. And now an extra five for being Battleforged. Um, and a lot more bodies on the table as well. So... I think it's uh, going to be handy for for big, bigger games, more the objective based games. I think I think it's going to look great, and I can't wait to get them all painted. It's going to be a while before this changes. You know, I'll keep updating you with uh, what happens, especially things like the Zangor is going to be thirty of them to paint, um, and obviously the the, the Morlafines. They're quite an expensive model to buy. Um, so you know, once I get them all updated, I'll do a showcase and an update of uh, the Thousand Suns, the models, the way that they're coming on. Um, there's not a lot for me to do. There's, like I said, there's the Demon Prince. Uh, there's 30 Zangors. Zangor Shaman. Two Morlafines. So, model-wise, there's not a great deal. I've got the majority of the rest already painted up. Uh, it's the Zangors that are going to take the time. Um, but looking forward to it. So, I mean, so in regards to Sighters, uh, more of the, like, the philosophy side of it, uh, the, obviously I've got Armin. So he's three powers there. But Demon Prince, there's two. So there's five Sighters there. The Aspiring Sorcerer, six. Seven for the uh, the Sorcerer within the Terminators. Eight for the Zangor Shaman. So there's, what, one? Oh, yeah, eight powers that I can cast already there. And then moving down to these guys, these are all two each. So eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So 14 powers that I can potentially go off there. Now, if I wanted to be really, really nasty, um, you know, that that's 
multiple multiple powers but what i like to do is i like to have as many different powers as possible especially with your generally in match play only being able to cast one so i I think it's going to give a nice uh, showcase and a nice array of uh, different powers, different buffs. Obviously, Smite being chucked out left, right and centre. Um, you know, the, the, there's a potential for, for quite a lot of Smites and the Mortal Wounds weakening things down. Let's just say you've got a Land Raider and, you know, the, the Terminators, the Zangos and maybe Zaramans moved up and the Demon Princes moved up. And they've all reduced the Land Raider down by, say, six Mortal Wounds, something like that. And then a Morlefiend gets into combat with it. You know, it, 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 it's it making tasks easier for them to do. It's working together, and I think it's going to work quite well. Um, especially with a, a few stratagems hiding there. Now, the only other thing really uh, to talk about, that's mainly the uh, the army that I'm proposing, is the, uh, the, the Relic. Now, I always tend to take um, the Helm of the Third Eye, which is what I'm going to still keep. Um, I may end up point, uh, paying points for other other because uh, here's some there's some decent uh, relics you can have uh, like the dark matter crystals are pretty good one as well uh, but I'm gonna keep uh, the dark matter uh, the I'm gonna keep the helm of the third eye and I'm gonna give it uh, to one of the exalted um, obviously it's free so there's just a potential of being able to get more points back for them command points to use against the nice stratagems that they have. Uh, so that is pretty much it for the Thousand Suns development video. This is the proposed list, uh, just for points wise as well. Uh, that comes to exactly two thousand points as well, with all of the upgrades. Um, you know, like the warp flame pistol here, and every single unit, everything like that. It has worked out exactly two thousand points on the nose as well. So I'm pretty happy at that. So. Like I say, leave your comments about what you think that the army, you know, how the how you think that they might perform. Is there any major changes that you would take, um, particularly round about this guy, you know, the Zango Shaman? I'm a little bit, I'm about maybe I'd say the seventy percent, you know, thinking yeah, yeah, pretty decent. But before I invest in them, I'm just wondering, is there anything else that could maybe benefit? Um, I don't particularly really want to start dropping anything out i'm quite happy with everything else it's mainly just this guy uh, that i'm a little bit unsure of um but certainly leave your comments and uh, like i say hopefully hopefully uh, these guys won't take too long to come on the channel and we'll i'll start to do uh updates of the new units as well so i hope you've enjoyed uh just the uh, the uh the army development video on the good old thousand sons uh, they will feature on the channel soon as well with the way that they currently are until these new units start appearing. Uh, but like I say, until next time guys, I hope you've enjoyed this and uh, happy wargaming.